Hello students, we are going to study the chapter for cell lifeline. Okay, this chapter will connect it with our environment. Okay, it is a renewable source of our country. Okay, when we see this forest, okay, 21% of the area of our country is covered with forests. Okay, so what are these forests basically? Okay, it consists of the trees, the herbs, the shrubs as well as different kinds of animals living in it okay so this forests are shelter of different animals okay so when we see a particular forest okay so we this forest okay can be classified i can say in different layers as it is consisting of what the trees the herbs the shrubs as well as the forest floor Okay, so these are the, forms the different layers of the forest. Okay, so first layer of the forest is the crown layer. Okay, so what is this crown actually? Any tree, okay, any big tree or small tree, okay, they form the surface, the roof, okay, and how they are, it depends how they, the shape of the crown will be. Okay, suppose if there is a big tree, okay. The whole crown, okay, in this manner, okay, kisi ka crown, some crown, okay, the shape will be on the surface of the stem, it can be like this also, okay, getting, okay. so this is what the, which is present on the surface of the total stem, it forms the what, the crown, it is of different shapes, I am showing you, okay, its shape is not fixed, it is of different shape okay so this is the crown okay next layer it comes is the canopy okay so when we talk about this canopy okay there are number of trees in the forest okay and their branches spread out okay and when they spread out they form just a clear or the roof okay on the surface and that forms the canopy layer Suppose if there are trees, okay, it spreads out, isn't it? Some tree over here, it also spreads out, okay. So, what happens in this? You can see that here the branches of the different trees, okay, they have spread out. Okay, and yes, we can say that yes, the branches come, goes on overlapping also the different um, branches of the different trees. Okay, thereby forming totally a covered area, the roof of the forest. Okay, and that is known as canopy. And if we go to understory, what is this understory layer of the forest? Okay, these are what the herbs and the shrubs okay herbs and the shrubs which are forming another layer that is the understory so you can see basically what here i have said about you the crown the canopy the understory you can see that he is in the forest different trees are present of different height okay the branches which are present above the stem of the tree forming different shapes okay the topmost layer it forms the crown okay can it be number of trees okay branches have been spread okay and as they are spreading they are covering a large amount of area thereby forming a roof like structure and this is why when it forms like a roof like structure on the surface what happens here you will be seeing the sun rays can't reach so properly to the forest floor of the uh, forest okay forest floor we are seeing that this is the ultimate okay the forest floor is the ultimate where we can see what we can see the dead uh, decaying leaves okay because all the leaves fall down okay when it dries 
uh, number of microorganisms over here on the forest floor okay these are all totally covered so we can't even see the soil sometimes properly in the forest because it is covered with the dried leaves okay some animals some microorganisms okay and as a result this forest for floor is totally covered by leaves dead and decaying leaves we can say dried leaves we can say microorganisms we can say small animals we can say small insects we can say okay so all the microorganisms the insects like uh, the centipedes the millipedes and all they all are, are present on the forest floor and they what cover the totally the soil of the uh, forest okay so this we can see now how the layers as i have made the figure over here total of forest you can see how they are differentiated into different layers this canopy covers the whole surface as the result we see that yes the forest floor appears to be darker okay because here we can see that yes the sunlight totally properly can't reach the forest floor so all the layers which we have studied okay basically this forest floor layer okay dead decaying leaves tree uh, animals small centipedes millipedes milli microorganisms and yes the animals also survive in the or they are present in the uh, forest floor layer okay so this is how you can see that yes the forest has got different layers now let us see the uses of the forest okay number of uses are there of the forest we have seen that yes number of trees number of animals okay wide variety is found in the forest so it has number of uses also so from the forest we get, we get different forest products okay like we can get, get water gum we can get resins okay we can get what wood we can get what oil we can get what even food we can say okay we can get medicinal plants from which what is prepared medicinal plants medicines can be prepared so number of things we can get from the forest okay we can get wood from the wood furnitures are made okay we see that yes furnitures are made from the wood many wood products are there toys are there okay number of things are there we get gums we get resins we get the oil this eucalyptus plant okay it gets the oil very essential and very important oil okay and number of trees are there which also provide oil okay food also we can get from the forest okay and yes number of medicinal plants are present okay which from which medicines can be made okay and they are of our use so forest products are of great use to us okay now these forests they purify the air how do they purify the air actually what happens number of trees are present in the forest of different sizes okay they can be trees they can be herbs they can be shrubs okay it can be long grasses and even the grasses okay so what these plants do they photosynthesize in order to prepare their food isn't it so when they are carrying out the process of photosynthesis they take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen are the animals and yes we human beings also what we do during respiration we take in what uh, this oxygen and give out carbon dioxide and as a result it maintains this balance of this carbon dioxide and the oxygen isn't it in the environment otherwise one gas will be increased that is if they don't take in carbon dioxide what will happen carbon dioxide will increase in the air isn't it so basically it purifies the air by adding what oxygen to the air and that is all because they are also known as this forests are also known as the lungs okay because they purify the air by adding what oxygen to the air but yes one thing you remember that plants also during respiration they take in oxygen and they give out carbon dioxide but yes the rate of photosynthesis is more than the respiration in photosynthesis more amount of this carbon dioxide is utilized and as the result we say that yes it is adding what oxygen to the air and yes it is purifying the air thereby acting as the lungs 
So these forests are also known as green lungs of nature. Okay, what are they known as? Green lungs of nature. Why they are known as green lungs of nature? I said to you they are also known as lungs or they are also known as green lungs of nature. Why? Because plants are green in nature. They purify the air by adding what oxygen to it. And as the result, we say that yes, they are known as green lungs of nature. Okay, now. They prevent, the control, uh, prevent and control soil erosion. How do they prevent and control soil erosion? Actually these trees, they are firm with the soil, isn't it? And as a result, when they are firm with the soil, naturally soil cannot be eroded because it binds the soil with it. And as a result, what happens? It prevents this soil erosion. Okay? Now, it also controls flood. Naturally, if it is controlling the soil erosion, okay, it will control the floods. What happens in this actually, the water, they go on seeping slowly inside the uh, soil, okay, of the forest. It goes on, seeps down slowly. This plant holds also the soil, the soil firmly and as a result, the, it is not being washed off from the forest. It remains in this forest and yes, you will be seeing that suppose if there is totally um, this, uh, the forest is, uh, is covered with a canopy layer, you have seen that yes, the branches are spread naturally. What happens? When the rain falls, okay, we will be not feeling that yes, too much it is raining. Why? Because this branches, what happens here, the water gets trapped. Okay, as a result, all the water doesn't flow down on the forest floor easily. It uh, slowly and slowly it falls down. The trees are binding the soil. Naturally, slowly and slowly what it is, uh, infiltration is taking place. The water is seeping inside the soil. Okay, and as the result, what happens? It can't, the soil erosion is also controlled and even the floods are controlled because all the soil and the water is not washed from the forest so easily. Okay, now. It also increases the soil fertility. How does it increase the soil fertility? Okay, actually what happens, the dead and decaying leaves on the forest floor as well as the dead animals, okay, what happens here, the microorganisms act on those and convert it into humus, thereby adding fertility to the soil. So top layer of the forest is totally very fertile because it consists of humus. Okay, now it reduces global warming. How? Huh? If carbon dioxide is in, uh, added to the atmosphere, okay, what happens? It causes global warming because this creates the increase in the temperature of the environment. Okay, and as these plants are taking in carbon dioxide, giving out oxygen, thereby they are reducing this global warming okay it provides shelter to many plants and animals okay yes they do provide shelter to many plants and animals we have seen that yes this forest consists of number of plants as well as different variety of animals so basically total biodiversity okay it means different varieties of plants and animals are found in the forest Okay, and here they provide shelter to these animals also as well as the plants grow. So they are also having place for their growth in the forest. And yes, these animals, because of these plants, heavy plants, number of plants present, these animals also get shelter in the forest. Okay, one more thing is there, it also plays a great role in water cycle. Okay. water cycle. How it plays a great role in a water cycle? Okay, actually what happens? Here the trees transpire also, the leaves of the trees and the herbs and the shrubs. Transpiration is going on. Okay, here the water is lost in the form of water vapor. Okay, it goes, forms the clouds and then it precipitates as rain. So, it also plays a great role in water cycle also, okay. Now, let us study the interdependence of plants and animals. How plants are dependent on animals and 
on how animals are dependent on plants. Okay, so first we are studying about the how animal depends on plants. Okay, so first of all, animal gets food as well as oxygen from the plants. Okay, and also they get shelter. Okay, these plants provide shelter to the animals. So first point, let us see food and oxygen. Okay, so first let us study about the food. How animals are dependent for food on the plants. They are either dependent, okay, directly or indirectly. How let us understand that. See, animals living in the forest, okay, they basically feed on this fruits and all, okay, number of animals, it's okay. Okay, and the, here we will be seeing that yes, some animals feed on, they are what herbivores in nature like Suppose, okay, if I am saying herbivores, it means eating small plants and uh, grasses, okay. This small plants and grasses, okay, they prepare its food, okay. These are eaten by the herbivores, okay. Like we can take the example of uh, what? Insect, okay. Now, here, this insect what happens? Can be eaten by frogs. Okay. These frogs can be eaten by snakes. Okay. And these snakes can be eaten up by eagles. Isn't it? So this is basically we are seeing a food chain over here. Okay. These plants taken up by the insects. And then taken up by the, this insect taken up by the frogs and this frogs taken up by the snakes and this snakes taken up by the eagles. So this is a food chain. So we are seeing that yes, these insects, they are directly dependent on these plants. Isn't it? But yes, they too, these frogs, snakes and eagles, they are also dependent on, indirectly dependent upon water. This plants only, why I am saying that? Because here, this insect is the plants that is taken up by the frogs, okay? Frogs, okay, it is taking the insects which has already taken the plants, okay? Had plants. Then that goes on with the snakes and the snakes that is taken up by the eagle, okay? So this is type, is this type of chain which has been found is known as what? Food chain. So, whether directly or indirectly, they are dependent on food, okay, for the plants, these animals, okay. Now, talking about the oxygen, okay, I said you right now, these plants purifies the air by adding oxygen to it because they are taking carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis and releasing out oxygen. So, this oxygen is taken up by the animals. So here animals are dependent for the pure oxygen, okay, uh, on what? The plants. And yes, these plants, they form a dense area, okay, in the forest, covering a tremendous large amount of area. Okay, these animals take shelter, okay, in this only, uh, in the, below the branches or on the branches of the tree, okay, and thereby these animals are provided with shelter by the plants. These plants provide shelter to these animals. Now, how do plants depend on the animals? Okay, we have seen right now that yes, the animals depend upon the plants. Now we are seeing how do plants depend upon the animals. Okay, so here plants require carbon dioxide for the process of photosynthesis. Okay. And yes, animals gives out carbon dioxide, okay, during the process of respiration. So this carbon dioxide which is given out by the animals can be taken up by the plants for the process of photosynthesis so that they can prepare its own food, okay. Now, this animals also helps in pollination, okay. Like you can see the butterflies, small um, insects, okay, they feed on the nectar of the flowers and as the result they move from one plant to another thereby pollinating them. So it helps in pollination, okay, 
Next is it also helps in the dispersal of seeds and fruits. Okay, what happens? The animals they are moving in the forest. Okay, the and yes, some seeds and fruits sticks to their body. Okay, and as a result, it can go from one place to another. Okay, and yes, the droplings of the animals. Okay, the animals eat these fruits. Okay, and they travel to different distances. Okay. The droppings of the animals, okay, what happens? These herbivores who are feeding just on seeds and fruits, okay. The droppings of these animals, okay, moves to different places also. And yes, what happens from this droppings, the seeds which are present in that, okay, they grow into what? A seedling and a sapling and then into new plants. So we are seeing a wide diversity. A, a plant found in one end of the forest can also be found in the other end of the forest very easily. This is because of the dispersal of the seeds present in the forest. So forest basically is self-equipped, okay, to form a wide range of diversity known as biodiversity, okay. Now, they also help in aeration of the soil. How? So animals like uh, this earthworm, okay, they dwell inside the soil, making the soil uh, quite aerated. It means it makes the soil loose, and as a result, what happens? Aeration in soil becomes proper, and yes, if the aeration it becomes proper, the plants can grow more properly because here now the water can seep inside the soil very easily. Forest is a dynamic living entity. Why? We are saying that yes, is a dynamic living entity. See, these forests, if we talk about this forest, they are self-sustainable. It means what? Do we sow seeds in the forest? No. What plants? We don't sow the seeds. Okay? They are self-equipped. I said to you all that yes, dispersal is self, the animals which is present over there, they also help in the dispersal of the seeds and plants. And yes, the soil of the forest also, when these seeds fall down, they sprout out, okay, forming the seedling and the sapling. And thereby, what happens, the plants go on growing in this forest, okay. So here, no one is doing anything. The forest is self-equipped for the multiplication of the trees and the plants over there, okay. These animals also, they also help these plants. These plants also help these animals, thereby maintaining a proper balance over there. Okay, so here the animals also live properly because of the plants and the plants also can sustain properly because of the animals. We even see that proper balance is there in the atmosphere. Okay, if the plants suppose... For example, I am sure taking only one plant, okay, but yes, you all know number of plants are there, okay. They are fixed to the soil, okay. They take in what? The water and the minerals from the soil, okay. So, and yes, they grow to form plants, okay. They photosynthesize. Isn't it? Taking what? CO2 from the atmosphere and yes, sunlight is also provided to it. Sunlight is also provided to it. Okay. Now what happens? Here, number of trees are there. Okay. Performing same procedure. So here, what happens? It is taking water and minerals from the soil, taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, okay, and photosynthesizing and thereby providing the food to itself also and to the animals also which are in the forest, okay. So, here, what happens? These animals we have seen whether directly or indirectly, they feed on these plants, isn't it? And yes, when they die, okay, what happens? The decomposers, okay, 
that are the microorganisms. Okay, they feed on these animals. Okay, and thereby they again add nutrients to the soil. Okay, here it is taking water. Okay, by the process of transpiration. Okay, it moves up, forms the clouds, and then precipitates again as rain, thereby again adding this water to the soil. So we are seeing totally that yes, what is happening over here, total energy is conserved because here energy is just being transformed. And this is why totally this makes it a dynamic system, okay, in which it is self-acute, okay. And as it is self-acute, it is propagating by itself, okay, thereby, yes, we can say that it is the lifeline for the living community because the living community is what? The plants, the animals, the microorganisms. Now, as the population is increasing, what is going on? There is the cutting of trees are going on so that employment can be provided to the people, okay, houses can be made, buildings can be made, okay, and yes, the forest products like wood and all are also used by human beings, okay. So this cutting of the trees, okay, of the forest is known as deforestation. And as I said to you, the population is increasing, okay, the forests are being cut off for land or for wood, okay, to provide employment and um, to provide buildings, to make buildings, to provide a shelter for the human beings, that is the houses, buildings, construction of industries, okay, in order to provide employment to the human beings, I am saying basically deforestation is being carried out, okay. So, if it is being done, trees are cut off, first of all, the effect which we will be seeing that yes, there will be an increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and yes if the carbon dioxide is increased okay what will happen the air will be polluted okay we, we are getting this uh, uh, oxygen which is provided by this forest okay uh, during the process of photosynthesis this plants gives out oxygen and yes it maintains the balance of carbon dioxide which are being respired out by the human beings okay this carbon dioxide is added to the atmosphere. So this oxygen and carbon dioxide is totally balanced in the atmosphere. Okay, that balance will be disturbed. Okay, and yes, it, it, it is disturbed. Okay, suffocation will be there in the respiration process of the human beings as well as the animals. Okay, and yes, global warming can also be caused because CO2 is being going on being added to the atmosphere making the atmosphere totally warm in nature okay now forest products which we are getting okay i said right now we are getting medicinal plants we are getting food we are getting oils we are getting gums we are getting resin number of products we are getting okay will we get if we cut down the forest we will not get so deforestation there will be a decrease in the forest products okay now Soil erosion, flood, change in climate, okay, these are, are also affected. If deforestation is there, naturally the trees which are holding the soil, now those trees are not present, they are cut down, okay. Naturally soil erosion will increase because now the roots of the trees are not there to hold and bind the soil. And as a result, soil erosion will take place. Floods also, heavy rains are there, fall down on the floor of the, uh, the soil, okay naturally washing away all the things causing what soil erosion as well as total flood will be caused okay and yes if these are happening there will be change in the climate also isn't it now it disturbs the food chain i said yes these plants directly or indirectly okay they form a part of the food chain because from that only the food chain starts and yes, if these plants are decreased, the other animals which are going on directly dependent or feeding these plants, okay, what will happen directly or indirectly feeding this plant? They are dependent on these plants, okay. 
what will happen they will also be affected totally and naturally whole food chain will be disturbed so these forests are our lifeline okay because it provides us numerous things with the health with the products health i am saying why because it is adding oxygen to the atmosphere acting as green lungs of the nature okay providing us with oxygen okay so yes it is playing a part in the health of the animals okay it, it is giving number of products number of products we get from the forest okay it is also keeping our environment with proper climate preventing the floods preventing the soil erosion okay which are directly or indirectly all are related to the human life or the animal life okay and yes food chain if i am saying we are also dependent on the plants directly or indirectly so they are the life life as they are providing us as well as the animals with all the things with health with products with climate with nature okay they are the lifeline of the living community so this is all for today good day take care